When removing the old factory rivets, the easiest way to do that is with an air chisel and then with an air punch. Once you chisel off the head of the thing, you can drive the back of it out and these come off pretty easy and a lot less noise and mess than a grinder. With the rear cab mounts removed, you can focus your attention on the front bed mounts because the next set of bed mounts in line become your new short bed front bed mounts. So it actually works out. GM had it figured out back then. So the next thing would be to just clean up both sides of the frame. It's very important to make sure that the frame rails are level and supported from both ends using different jacks and jack stands, shims, whatever you need to do to make this thing flat so that it doesn't move and it's easy to weld back together. Now the way that I do this, I make three vertical lines 12 inches apart. If the whole thing is about 24 together. Then you take the top of the frame and go halfway down and make a horizontal line. Once you do that, your first cut is the center line all the way through. The other two cuts will only be halfway and you'll see how I do that in a second. If you do this correctly and you are properly supported, you won't have a single blade bind or any problem at all getting this cut. I use a hole saw to go through the frame in two spots. This makes the relief cuts easier so my horizontal lines match and my vertical lines match. It also enables me to use the plug I take out of the hole saw to use as a template so my radii are perfect. It's important to make sure that you take your time and that you've taken plenty of notes and measurements so that you can relocate your cab mounts once this frame is pulled together. This is what I used the plugs for that I took out of the hole saw. It just makes it easier to mark and you know you're going to get the measurement exactly right so when you pull them together they match perfectly you got to get this frame welded square or you are going to have one big mess once you have both sides properly cut you can roll the rear of the frame forward clamp it securely in place dead flat everywhere you can get it and start your welding i weld both sides um, and then I was able to grind down and dress the front side and on the rear we'll either do a fish plate or a full box which isn't done yet in this video but it does in fact get done. If you do this right you won't even be able to tell that frame was cut. The next major part of this production would be to take this boat anchor out and get it out of my way. This thing is just a tank. It's only a six cylinder, but listen to it hit the floor. Working into the wee hours of the night, I got the engine and transmission mocked up into position. Now I got it sitting there and it's sitting on the factory mounts that came from this 5.7 liter. And I'm going to try and use them. And actually I do. You can keep watching. You'll see how I do it. Basically, I knew the motor needed to come down to lower the center of gravity. You want your engine as down and as back to the center of the vehicle as you can get it. Well, these mounts, they hit. So what I did was I lifted it up, pulled the exhaust manifolds, flipped them around, made some spacers. And if you look carefully down there, you can see the mounts. I drilled holes and they hit cross member almost perfectly. All I had to do is drill some holes and get some spacers under them. Let's look at the other side because that one is almost as perfect. I did take one ear off and drill some holes and they have different spacers because these mounts are of different length, but they work. You don't need to buy anything. You can use those Pontiac motor mounts to fit right in this frame. The next thing I needed to do was get 
the cab mounts, the rear cab mounts, put back on the frame. And it's pretty easy from my notes that uh, I put them in the right spot, I put new cab mounts, dropped the cab down onto it, and it bolted into place almost perfectly the first time. Just like that. Through the magic of the internet, this frame is now shortened. The cab is back on. It's fully assembled. It is ready to put a fuel system in it and ready to start it. When this truck arrived to me, it had a lot of the work was done already on the suspension, but it came with some new parts. The new parts that it came with, um, you would think normally, oh, sure, you can use this. You know, it's a brand new tank. It drops between the frame rails. A couple problems. The first problem being. Uh, we got an air tank and a couple of compressors that are right in the way. Not a big deal. We already shortened the frame. Of course, we can relocate this stuff. I still have to chop eight inches off the back of this to get the short bed on it. Even though I would move that stuff, that's no good because this isn't the right tank. This is a tank for a carbureted system. It does not have a pump in it. Fine, you say. Put an external pump. Have you ever heard those? They sound like little jet airplanes under your car, and to be honest, that's not what we want. You don't hear fuel pumps in modern cars unless you listen very carefully because they're in the tank. I'm not going to buy a kit and put it inside here. This thing is a couple hundred bucks. It, it can honestly, it can go to someone who will use it in the future. I'm not going to use it. We've got um, a really good uh, in-tank system coming that I'll be able to run all of my lines tight, concealed, and it'll be EFI powered for the LS engine. I'm excited to do the test fire of this thing and uh, get a drive shaft on it because then the reality is I can move it around under its own power and that's a big deal because when it has power now, it'll be real power, not what it had before with that teeny tiny little six cylinder. I also need to disassemble this bed. This bed, um, I'm going to use the ends. Uh, we're we're going to use the lights. We're going to use the floor. We can shorten all the wood and all of the uh, uh, runners. But what I can't use are those sides. So right now we're on the hunt for short bed sides. They do make them reproduction for 60 through 66, which is what this is. Um, the reproduction ones are a little pricey. But at the end of the day, this truck's getting completed. And whether we find a really nice used one with good sides or we do a repop, either way, we're getting this thing completed. This is the part of the build that I needed to reconnect the steering. I need to get steering and brakes on it so I can push it outside, move it around the shop, do whatever I need to do. Now, we are going to put power steering on this thing, but for right now, it's got the manual steering gearbox on it. And, and this will do for the time being. Bolting the brake booster back onto the vehicle was super simple because none of that changed. All of the linkage changed. Now I will remove a clutch pedal that's still inside this cab. I also have to do some reworking of the brake lines because there was a small section of brake line where we cut the frame that was original. Can you believe that? From 1960, nobody ever changed that section of brake line. That's just a testament to how solid this truck is. How many more of those do I got to do? One, two, three, four, a lot. Is it nap time yet?
bed this assembly. It was early in the day. Uh, as you can see, it's dark now, so uh, that took a while. A lot of the parts have been showing up for this LS1 engine, and I'm almost ready to start it. But one of the first things I needed to do was get power to the airbag system so I could control it. And if you guys know anything about Ride Tech air suspension, they are Bluetooth controlled and you need a compatible phone, which I did not have. So long and short of it, I had to borrow one of the kids' old iPhones and download the app and get it to talk to the system so that I could air it up and do what it needs to do. Right now, it, it does in fact work. If I knew how to even function these, I don't have this, I have the other one. All right, here, let's see if we can get something to occur. PSI inside of that tank, so don't drill a hole in it. <laughs> uh, one of the neat things about this system is you can look at each individual corner and see what your shock pressure is, and that's cool, except it, it alerts me to the fact that mm, this isn't even. <laughs> it's not even at all. Now, if it were a race car, that'd be okay. You could bias it for the track you were on, um, but that isn't this. Now, I'm not going to get too particular about it because the full weight of the body isn't on it, so it doesn't matter. I, but now that I have this, I'll be able to dial it in. Like, this one here shows a little light. Huh? Sure. Close enough, within a pound or two of each one. But that's how it works, and I don't like Bluetooth stuff because it's a pain in the butt to set up. But once it's running and everything's working, it is pretty magical. I don't know why it's doing that. I didn't tell it to. Maybe I bumped it. But, uh, <clears throat> oh, I know why, because it was going back to ride height. Well, I put air in it. Truck just wants the last word. The yeah, truck wants the last word. It, it gets the last word, believe me. And it's usually, ah! but anyway. <laughs> That's going to about do it for this episode on the C10 build. Next time you come back and see where we're at with this, it's going to run on the touch of a button, hopefully the button is the key, and I will be assembling the bed, hopefully the drive shafts will be done, and we can make this thing move under its own power. So, please remember to like, subscribe, and share everywhere you see fit. Thanks, and I'll see you soon. Man, that's a small looking truck outside, isn't it? So my buddy comes over and he goes, hey man, my, my bed sounds a little funny, can you take a look at it for me? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, that's a leaf spring, folks. Uh, let's see if there's something we can do with this thing because it's a good truck otherwise. Yeah, you gotta make sure you're talking while music's being played because they won't like it after a few seconds.